Hello, this is Paul the Okanite coming to you with the last flight of Mary Foss using a modified Wings of Glory system. The modifications, which I collectively refer to as the ACES variant, are of my own making and are presented in a separate accompanying video. I'd recommend that you view that one first if you want to fully appreciate what you're going to see here. The date is September 23rd, 1917 with Staffelfuhrer Voss returning from a short leave the day before. His leave was uneventful. He's able to hang out with Kaiser Wilhelm, visit a Fokker factory, among other things, but it provided little rest. He flew the morning patrol where he dispatched an RAC aircode DH-4. Meanwhile, his two brothers arrived at the aerodrome for a short visit, and the three ate lunch together, as it turns out, for the last time. Voss's brothers observed his haggard appearance, noting that he must have been flying on nerve alone for some time. Photos were taken, and Foss was soon preparing for a late afternoon patrol. Sometime after 1700 hours, Foss took off ahead of his Staffel with his two wingmen in their false D3s. For reasons unknown, Foss flew out ahead of his wingmen, who eventually lost contact with him. Both they and a mixed flight of an Albatross D-5 and Faltz D-3s, also from Foss's Staffel, were intercepted by RIC pursued aircraft and Foss flew on alone. Initially, Foss did well, mixing it up with a pair of SC-5As from No. 60 Squadron, RFC. In short order, Foss put rounds into the engine of the first SC and splintered the rudder bar of the second, disabling both aircraft. Two flights from the elite No. 56 Squadron RFC came to the rescue. Foss soon found himself in close combat with six enemy SC-5As with more than one ace pilot in the lot. For eight minutes, Voss twisted, Voss turned, to the point of briefly flying his aircraft sideways in a so-called flat turn, he holed every one of his tormentors. Despite having the opportunity to escape on multiple occasions by using his triplane's superior climb rate, he chose to stay in the fight. Eventually, the inevitable happened when Foss was struck by an unseen opponent, severely wounding him and bringing both the engagement and his life to a close. We now pick up the action at the start of the fight. First, let's review a couple uh, scenario rules that I'm going to put into effect. For the Allies, Allied aircraft must withdraw when they suffer greater than 50% damage or when a pilot is wounded. So if this plane is all shut up or he's personally taken a hit, that pilot's going to want to get out of there. For the Germans, Voss must not withdraw until all ammo is expended or he is wounded. Again, history suggests that he could have gotten away, but he didn't, so he wants to be in this fight, and so he's going to stick. There is a Albatross that will come in later. An Albatross D5 did show up. Three of the six SCs peeled off after it and put it out of action pretty quickly. So we will have that in the game too. In addition, Voss does have the flat turn DR1 ability, which will allow him to shoot anywhere forward of his, the 3-9 line of his aircraft. So having to ha instead of having this roughly 45 degree angle of fire that is on the base of each aircraft, he can shoot anywhere forward of his 3-9 line, but if he uses this extended arc, then it's at one card detriment, so he'll pull one card less because I can't believe you can aim as effectively going sideways as you can going straight on against your opponent. The scenario begins with Foss on the tail of one of the two number 60 squadron SC-5s that were here. Just because of the limitations of the number of aircraft I have, I only have three SE models, and I doubt most of you have a whole lot more than that, if any. The actual model here and the performance is going to be from a Newport 28. I don't think it's going to matter because I think this guy is going to be put out of combat pretty quickly. In addition, the second flight of SEs that come on will also be uh, not SEs. They are going to be Spot 13s. It's a power aircraft, not an Angles aircraft. It's a good substitute. I have three SE models. That will be the first flight of 56 Squadron. So. This is number 60 squadron, and Foss begins by tailing that poor pilot. Panning over here to the left, we see what is B flight of number 56 squadron with McCudden. I'm not putting any Allied aces into this fight. I want to see what it's like with all average pilots for the Allied side. The Albatross coming in is going to be an average pilot. But, of course, Foss is going to be a legendary ace. 
So I want to see what a legendary ace can do to average guys. And so that's what we're going to see here. If you wanted to recreate this scenario, yeah, you could make, you could put McCudden in the lead plane. You could make him at least a regular ace, if not a legendary ace. I think at this point, I wouldn't make him a legendary ace. Make him a regular ace. In the second flight that's coming, you could make one of those guys an ace as well. And those guys are way down here. They're not, they're not on the map yet. They're represented by spot 13s. Now, the way I'm going to do this is that every turn I'm going to roll 2d6. And when the, the, when the die roll matches the turn number for the next turn, they will, they will enter on that turn. So, for example, to have them enter on turn two, I roll 2d6, I would have to roll aces. And if I do that, and that roll happens at the end of turn one, uh, then we know that they're coming in turn two. Okay? Likewise, the albatross is going to come in over the center map on the opposite side, so consider the center map to be kind of no man's land. He's going to come in the opposite side on the same, with the same die rolls. Uh, I have gone ahead, I've already gone ahead and put the down cards for each of the, uh, what's it, we have five aircraft on the map, so they're all done. Number 56 squadron starts at level one for altitude, and Voss and the uh, number 60 squadron SE, or in this case Newport, start at level two, so they have an altitude advantage. Because the Newport is being tailed, he gets, uh, Voss is going to get to see what his card is, and he knows he's doing a side slip left. Because Voss is a legendary ace, he doesn't have to pre-plot. This is his card. He picked it after he saw what the, what the Newport is doing. So we can go ahead and, and, and show that. And he's just going to, he's going to side slip right along with him. Okay? And so that's, we know what they're doing. Let's go ahead and plot the next move for the ally side. I'm gonna figure out what cards we're gonna pick for their move. All right, the number 56 squadron has plotted its move. It is climb. Now a word on climbing, SC5s are not included in the climb rate table in the rule book because they came later. The Climb rate for both the DR1 and the SE, or excuse me, and the SPODs, it says two, which means they have to plot two climb moves before they add a peg to their altitude. And as far as shooting and stuff, the only thing that matters is how many pegs, okay? That determines your actual altitude as far as game interaction goes. So it will take two turns of climbing for these SEs at level one to get up to level two where the DR1 is. Now, I thought about this because the DR1 supposedly has a higher climb rate. And what I came up with is that the byproduct of uh, the DR1 with Voss not having to pre-plot moves is he gets to use his climb card every other turn, whereas the others, even though they have climb two, have to stick it in this pre-plotted two turns in advance, which means even though they have the same climb rate, the other aircraft will not be able to use their climb card as often and therefore will have a lower rate of climb. So I think it works out okay for unexpected reasons. If it wasn't for that, I think I would re-rate all the Allied aircraft at climb rate 3 because all the sources agree that DR-1 had the best climb rate and I don't think it was even close. The DR-1 is actually a, actually a quadruplane instead of it. They call it a triplane, it's actually a quadruplane because between the wheels of, of the carriage it wasn't just a piece of wood to hold it together. It was an actual airfoil, and it did provide measurable lift. So the DR-1 actually has four lift surfaces, not three. All right, so let's go ahead and execute these climbs. I think what I'm going to do is I'll show you these moves for this turn, and then I think I'll cut camera and just do them in subsequent turns. That's what a climb looks like. Okay, so you see the red. I mean, the, this means it's a stressful maneuver. That means it's going up. That means that's the plot. And the red means it's a climb or a dive. They're, they're the only red ones. So you just put the card in front, stick the aircraft over, and that's it. This card is used. Uh, this guy, let's see. This guy should be the red guy. Okay. Here's his card. Move the aircraft. That's done. This is a very simple game in a lot of measures. 
And it's great for introducing new people because it's just it's very easy to understand what you're supposed to do. Oops. Put the thing, stick the airplane back on, and there we go. We have this guy. So now we're going to do the, uh, the new part. We go thus, stick the card in front, move the aircraft, the arrows on back, and he's done. Finally, Werner Voss. Werner Voss is here. He's good here. And he's done. And he's tailing the heck out of this guy. All right, well, clearly Foss has a shot. Now, remember using the modified rules. Let's go through that just a second. As usual, you, mer you measure from basically the peg to anywhere on the stand of the, of the target. So this guy is in long range. Remember, we've added extended range beyond long range. This is long range. Normally, this would get one card pull. Uh, because Voss is, is a legendary ace, he gets an extra card pull just because. Now, as far as how much ammunition he wants to use, if he uses a short burst, he loses a card. An average burst is just the normal game rules, no modification. And then, or a long burst requiring four ammo points, and that will get him an extra pull uh, for an effect card, plus an extra card whose only purpose is to make it more likely he jams his guns. Remember, as a legendary ace, Foss gets to throw away one, one symbol result. So he's less likely to jam his guns than other pilots, but it still can happen, and you really don't want that to happen right at the start of the engagement. So Voss, I think, is going to do a, a normal burst. Uh, each aircraft starts with 20 ammo points, so Voss is using two points out of his 20. He gets uh, the base is one card because he's Voss. He gets, one, he gets one extra card, and the normal burst is no modifier. There's the pull. All right. So we have, that would be a, a jam gun on the left. Voss ignores one of those. And he does three hits on the, on the new port. So the three damage is done. All right. That is turn one. Now we're going to roll to see if we have other aircraft coming in next turn. If I can find the dice. Ah, there they are. All right. Four... The second section of number 56 squadron, they need aces. And they roll a seven. And for the albatross, he needs the same thing. He needs aces. Ah, well, one die is a three, so the other one on the floor doesn't matter. Uh, note that I have given each of the number 56 squadron uh, planes to climb, which is all of them. A one, a one marker to say that they've got one point of climb accumulated. When they get two points of climb accumulated, then they will actually go up one peg level with their aircraft. All right, that is turn one. Let's do turn two. I'm going to plot cards. So everybody has plotted their moves. Because Voss is firmly in the saddle, he gets to see the card that was plotted. Note that I forgot to give the extra card to Voss for tailing, so I'm going to do one more damage card to him now. There was another, he was supposed to get an extra card just to make things even more lively. And he did an extra three points of damage. Now, what Voss wants to do, at, at a minimum, what he wants to do is to get over 50% damage on that guy. That'll force him to uh, leave the map instead of try to re-engage to make the, the matters even uh, worse for Voss. So he does, want to, he does want to deal with this guy before 56 Quadrant shows up. Okay, the new port is going straight, and he will go ahead and execute this guy. He's right about there. The DR-1 is a slower aircraft, so eventually he'll pull away, but I don't think he'll last long enough to pull away. And there's Foss's move. Again, he got to see what this guy was going to do, and since he has no advance requirement for plotting in advance, he gets to follow him. It's when you got a legendary ace at your six o'clock, life is going to be very hard and probably very short. All right, let's do 56 squadron. Yellow, straight move. 
Again, he used his climb last time, so he's got to plot it at the end, at, in the first slot, so he's not going to be able to climb again for two more moves. Green. And red. Oops. Ah. Get on there. Okay, there's red. And green. All those aircraft have now, all those aircraft have now plotted. And we're down to Voss, Voss, taking a shot. So let's do it right this time from the get-go. He is going to still be at long range. A little bit farther away this time, but still in long range. Uh, that gives him a base of one card. He's legendary ace, gets, it, gets him to two. He's in the saddle tailing. That's three. And he's going to use... Well, he, boy. He wants to get like two more hits on this guy, I think. And then, uh, and then he at least has gotten the 50% mark. We got a lot of planes to shoot up. Let's do one. Let's go with uh, a short burst this time, and see what that take what that what that gives to us. So because of the short burst, he loses one of the three cards. Once again, he's going to do two cards damage. As so. Okay, one jam. We ignore one of those. And uh, he does four more points damage, so four, seven is ten points. He is now over half. He is now over half. The Newport takes a total of 14 damage before it's shot down, and so now we, at least we know that this guy is leaving. He is not going to be turning to fight. He's not going to try to re-engage. He's just trying to get out of dodge. The last thing to do in the turn is to go ahead and roll the die for entry of new aircraft. So, here's for the, the second part of 56 Squadron coming in. We need a 3 this time. A 4. Very close. Horseshoes and hand grenades, buddy. Close ain't close enough. All right. Next, uh, the, the Albatross. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I rolled a 2. There's a chance. Ah. Let's roll this again. Oh, we got a three. Okay, the albatross is entering next turn. So the the force is with Werner this time. All right, so I'm gonna now I'm gonna plot turn three, including the albatross, which is gonna start in no man's land on the north side. So the uh, D5 has entered the map. He's at uh, he's got a three peg altitude, so he's above these guys. You know, the number 56 squadron is climbing, but still at level one. Voss and the new porter at level two, and this guy's up there at level three. But one difference that should be taken note of is that the, the Albatross D5 takes four climbing turns to, go, to add one peg to his height. So he's a little reluctant to give up this altitude that he has. He doesn't want to pay that out right away until he's sure that he's at the right level for the fight. Right now it looks like the fight's going to be at level two, and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, all right, so... The Newport plotted a move. Now we know he has to disengage. He cannot turn and fight. He's not going to climb and re-engage and all of that. He's just going to get out of here. And he plots a straight move. Okay. So he is going to, he's diving. So what he's going to do, he's going to shed one altitude peg. He's going down to level one. That's what he's going to do. Voss can still shoot at him, but it's, it's, Unless he comes down to level one, he will subtract one card from what he does because the, the altitude difference also adds distance. That's accounted for by losing one card with shooting down one level. Note that you cannot shoot one up one level, but you can shoot down one level. These planes could not hang on their props long enough to take shots when there's too much of an altitude difference pointing up. All right, now, now we execute the rest of the moves. 56 Squadron. Let's see, Mr. Yellow. Straight move. Mr. Yellow is going straight. Mr. 
Mr. Green. He's going straight. Mr. Red is going straight. Now we have the albatross and Voss. Albatross is turning to the right and maintaining his altitude. And Voss, again, he's not pre-plotting. He's doing this, he's doing his card right for that very turn. We see the uh, albatross is turned to his right. And Voss is, he's decided that he does not want to chase this guy down, going down in altitude. And if he's not careful, if he doesn't, if he, he could get himself in a position where he's sandwiched between the two as he flights. If this second flight comes in, and it's going to come in on the south side here, going to come in down here on the map edge, it, would be, it could be a bad place. So he has done all he needs to do to this guy, and now he's going to turn to fight the other, the other guys. So he's turning to the right. Now he has disabled one guy. Now, he could do a flat turn fire. It's out of his normal range, but it's in front of his 3-9 line. So he can actually shoot this guy. Again, because he's kind of done what he needs to do with this guy. Ammunition can be an issue, so let's not shoot. Let's not shoot. He'd lose a card for this extended arc fire. He's not tailing anymore, I wouldn't say, because he's not facing the guy. This is going to be a snapshot from the side, from, from an extended arc. It's not going to be a tailing shot, per se. So, this is done. Uh, he's, not going to, he's, he's not going to take that shot. That's turn three. Now we need to roll a four. Last time they did roll a four for the second part of number 56 squadron. We got a one and a three. Rolled a four. Okay, next turn... The second part of 56 squadrons coming in. It's a good. It's a good thing Voss decided to turn. Hopefully, hopefully this is not going to still be bad because, well, they might get extended range shots on them. We'll see. But good thing he didn't continue in after this after this wounded Newport because that could have been very bad. All right, everybody who's coming in is now in. Uh, let me let me plot the next move. And so we see uh, B Flight has all plotted climb moves. This will be their second climb point, and so they will actually gain a peg and be up at level two with Voss. And there's Werner Voss. He is going to uh, do a, a D or one ish sort of maneuver. It's going to be a severe slide to the right. This is, uh, this is specific to this aircraft. And if you see the card that's right in front of him, you see the blue arrow going all the way to the right. That's more than most planes get to do. Our Newport is simply doing an easy turn to the right because he has to exit the far map, not the map side. He's got to go all the way. So he's getting out of here. And our Albatross is simply going straight. He's simply going straight so that he can catch up with these other guys and still maintain his altitude at least for a while until he sees what's going on. Let me go ahead and execute these. Okay, I've plotted the moves, I have not executed them, but one thing that I uh, didn't account for from last turn, so we're going to rewind just a little bit, I can see that uh, we do have extended range shots. That's the, uh, the new range category that I put in the system. It's three segments on the ruler, so uh, each ruler has two segments to it. And Mr. Yellow and Mr. Green are both in extended range of Voss, and of course Voss is in extended range in return. Extended range starts with a base of zero cards, but if you do a, a long burst, you get one extra card and you can actually have an effect. You also draw a second card whose only purpose is another chance to jam your guns. I think both yellow and green will both do extreme range shots, burning four ammo points each. They'll each draw one effect card. Voss is uh, going to go ahead and do a regular shot using two ammo points. He gets an extra card just because he's Voss. A legendary ace, and so he gets a one card effect with a standard burst instead of a long burst. So here are the cards that are going to be in play. That card is uh, an effect card for one of the uh, one of the two SEs. That's an effect card for the other. 
the card that's sort of kind of upside down next to him. That is the extra card whose purpose, sole purpose is to have more chance of those guns jamming because of the long burst. And as a legendary ace, Voss gets to allocate two defensive cards that can substitute for something that's being applied to him. He has decided to split those two cards between, between the, uh, the two attackers. So here's one, there's the other. And in addition, he gets to nullify one special effect during the turn. So uh, let's see what happens. So the first attacker. The first attacker has a two-point uh, uh, two point effect. Uh, the second card does not jam his gun, neither does the first. Uh, I take that by no, the first card does jam him. So, so Voss has a choice here. He can go ahead and take the two hits and, uh, and, apply, and not apply his one-point card. That would jam the guns of his opponent, or he can only take one hit. This is a tough choice. It's a very tough choice. This guy, Mr. Uh, who is this? This would be Mr. Yellow. Uh, Mr. Yellow is far enough away that they may, he may get another shot. I'm going to take the two hits and jam his guns. So we're going to take a two hit on Voss and jam the guns of uh, Mr. Yellow. Uh, next one. Okay, and Mr. Yellow, he, uh, or excuse me, Mr. Green. The, the base effect is zero, so he does no damage. And the substitute card that Voss has is also a zero, so no, no, that's a wash either way. It's going to be no hits. Uh, but the, the jamming card, uh, the extra jamming card because of the long burst, does in fact jam the guns. So both Yellow and Green have jammed guns, and they've done a total of two points damage to Voss's aircraft. And I think he takes, he takes 13 before he's shot down. Let me apply that. So the two cards that actually went into effect on Voss are put in his damage deck. He has a two-pointer and a zero. The other four cards are put in the discard available to be reshuffled in. So that was last turn. Now we got a situation where we have two planes with jammed guns. Let me, let me note that, and then we'll start executing the moves that I plotted. Oh, I almost forgot. Voss gets to shoot at Mr. Yellow. Let's see what he does. And he does another zero. So uh, Mr. Yellow gets this card in his damage deck. It is a zero. And now we put, let me put the moves on the table. So with B flight, we have uh, Mr. Mr. Red at the top of the screen is turning to his right. The other two are going straight. Okay. And then we have Voss doing a side slip to the right. So basically he sees uh, yellow and green madly hammering on their guns. And since he doesn't have to pre-plot, he can immediately react to the fact that, that he sees that, oh, they're hammering on their guns. That means one thing, they're not shooting. And our albatross is continuing straight, although diving. So he's going to get down to level two. He wants to join this fight. And oh, there's Voss. And way down here. We have the other spot starting his left-hand turn and the other going straight. And these, there's one thing about these spot 13s. They are fast planes. They can move, okay? Let me go ahead and execute this and see what we got. Well, we got some interesting stuff going on. Basically, Voss can shoot at Yellow, but Yellow cannot shoot at Voss because Yellow's guns are jammed. Red, the guy behind him, can't shoot at Voss because he's got Yellow in the way. It blocks him. And likewise, Voss cannot shoot at red. The albatross, however, can get a long-range shot at yellow or an extended shot at red. He's going to opt for the long-range shot at yellow. And then we also have down here this guy is actually able to take an extended shot at Voss if he so chooses. The other guy's too far. Note that uh, tailing rules do not apply at this extended range. If you are farther away than the radius of turn of your opponent, you're not really tailing him. Basically, the guy can turn around and hit you uh, head on head. By the time you get there, he's already turned around. So that doesn't work. So no tailing from extended range. All right, so we have some shoosting to do. We have a spot 13 
Mr. Blue, who can shoot with a long burst, and he will do that. He will get one card. Uh, we have Voss. He's going to shoot a standard burst, so at the base is two cards. He gets plus one because he's a legendary ace. So he's going to go in with three cards using a standard shot. And the Albatross at long range, not extended range, is going to shoot and get one card with a standard burst. All right, this is the shot from the spot 13, Mr. Blue, over to Werner Voss. The card on the left that's oriented vertical, that is the result. The one next to it is the extra card to give an extra chance of jamming. This is, that's the only thing this card can do. And the two cards to the right are Voss's defensive ability where he can substitute either of these for this attack card that's coming. Let's see what we got. So we see the result was a one point damage. Uh, Voss has no zero, so he is going to take that one point unless he wants to substitute the two point card and then, uh, then this guy has jammed guns. I think we just take the one point hit because this guy's not going to be a threat. We're just going to take the one point hit. And this lonely single card is the Albatross's shot at Mr. Yellow. And Mr. Yellow takes a one point hit. And this is Voss's shot also at the Yellow SE. We got some goings on here. So there's five points of damage. He's a smoker and he's got control damage. Now remember in the Aces uh, variant I have changed the meaning of these control surface hits. They used to be temporary hits that kind of interfered with you turning left or right. I've changed them to be permanent hits. And so with the first one, it's rudder damage. And so he cannot go directly from a left hand card to a right hand card, uh, one, after, one after the other. He has to have a straight card in between. So it's harder for him to bank one way to the other. Okay, once he's in a bank, he's fine, but to switch back the other way, it's going to take two turns. You can't do it immediately. Uh, and he's a smoker. It means that he cannot tail, which I don't think is a big deal. Smoking is not so bad. So you can see I've marked the damage on each of the aircraft. The, the actual markers are on, the, on their aircraft templates to mark the number of turns that they have these effects in place. But I put them on the plane here just so that it's easier for you guys to follow. So we see that the SC5 on the lower left cannot shoot. He has two more turns of not being able to shoot. Uh, the yellow guy in the middle, he can't shoot for two turns. He's smoking for three. Now the rule says the only penalty for smoking is that you cannot tail an opponent. You can be tailed, but not tail. You know, if you can't, if you can't see well enough to tail, then my, I feel that you should lose a card when you shoot. So let's call that a rule. I'll add that to my ACES system. When you're smoking, you lose one card when, uh, when you're shooting. And he has a permanent damage to his control services. He cannot change left to right without an intervening straight. Okay? We have three points of damage on Voss, and we have six points on the yellow SC. Two more, and he has to bug out. All right, we're at the merge. Uh, we see, let's see, the very damaged yellow SE5 making a turn to the right. We see the red SE5 going straight, and we see the uh, we see the green SE5 making a slip to the right. Voss has decided to turn into the fight, which is generally a good idea, especially if you got a plane that can turn on a dime. He's doing a hard left, with the albatross going straight on in. As far as the sea flight, they are over here. And let's see, the guy on the right is, is doing a climb. Okay, he wants to bank a climb point. If Voss goes up, he wants to be in a position to go up as quickly as he can. And the fellow on the left is doing a slip left. All right, so after movement, we have the blue spot 13 able to take an extreme range shot at Voss. Uh, he can go ahead and pull one card if he uses a long burst. I think given the, what we've seen so far, I don't know. All right, let's do it. He'll take his long range, he'll take his extreme range shot firing a long burst at Werner Voss. We have on the other side, none of the SCs can shoot. They're, they don't have any targets. The purple spot is too far away. And we have, we have the Albatross. He can take a short range shot at the yellow SC5 draw two cards and we'll do a standard burst. So we're going to draw two cards on the yellow, the yellow SE5 and one card on Voss. 
So this is what we have going against Voss. There's one card being drawn because it's a long burst. There's an extra card that adds to the, ja the jamming chance. And he's got his two defense cards that since there's only one guy shooting at him, he's going to use both right here. All his flying prowess is focused on avoiding this shot. Let's see what happens. Well, the shooter gets a giant nothing burger, zero hits, no jams, and uh, Voss doesn't have anything better to offer than a zero, so he is, his defense is not used. And so a zero point card is applied to Voss, no further damage. So the zero card goes on Voss's uh, stack of damage cards, the other cards being discarded, and now uh, the Albatross shoots his normal burst into the yellow SE5A. Well, 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 it's, uh, things are just getting, keep getting better for this guy. Four more damage, uh, which puts him over the 50% mark. But as a special parting gift, he gets a fire. So for the next three rounds, this, this, he's going to take a, an A-type damage card. And unlike the rules as written, I think fire is really bad aboard an aircraft that's made of wood and canvas and soaked with kerosene and filled with gasoline. The rules say that none of the special damages apply to a fire, and I'm saying they all do. Fires are very bad. Okay, so this guy takes four more, and now he's obliged to leave. He's got to try to disengage. He's not going to take further part in the fight in an offensive way. So far, so good for Werner Voss. So here are the plotted moves. We see the Newport that took it in the neck uh, in the beginning, continuing to try to disengage and fly off the map, as he must do. We see Voss turning hard to his left, trying to turn into these guys that are going to fly past him, get some shots in. The Spads, this guy is turning to his right, so it looks like we're going to have a head-on-head -head between Voss and this Spad. And I think, let's see, the other, the SE5s are basically kind of coming together and then they're going to be flying past each other and the albatross is climbing all right some interesting things going on basically we've had aircraft get so close to each other that i've had to substitute the aircraft card for the aircraft model we see that with voss there's his aircraft card right there and we actually have an sc5 hiding underneath those two as soon as they move past each other we put the model back on the table but for right now we've had to substitute the cards because we just couldn't jam that many aircraft models in such a small space note that the rules also have a collision rule i don't like it i think at this scale and this level of abstraction i think that's a bit too much so i don't use the optional aircraft collision rule all right for shooting we have uh, this spot and Voss exchanging fire at point blank range, short range. Maybe I should invent a point blank range, but for right now we just have short range. We'll use that. We have the Albatross with an option to shoot at the SC or to shoot at the spot. I think we're just going to really bang on that spot. Got, that would be a long range shot. So with, with two bursts, with a normal burst, that would be one card. The spot shooting at short range is two cards with a normal burst. I think he'll double it up and get three cards against Voss, so he's going to burn four ammo. Voss will burn two, I think. He's still got a little over half his ammo. He's going to do a standard burst. He's also going to get three cards. So two, two, uh, three cards exchanging, and with an additional one coming in from the Albatross. So for the attack on Voss from the uh, spot 13, uh, since he's done a long burst at short range, that's three attack cards. Since he did the long burst, there's one extra card. Gives him a bigger chance to jam his guns. And the cards to the right are the defensive measures that Voss can use. So we see that the spot in his firing against Voss, he has very minimal effect. He does not jam, except when Voss substitutes that. And so now Voss takes no damage. The zero cards go into Voss's damage deck, all three of them. And the Spod now has jammed guns for the next three turns. I'm getting the impression that it's good to be Werner Voss. He's holding up very well. But it's the luck of the cards. That could have been oh so much worse. Okay, now let's see what Voss does with his return fire. He's going to get three cards. And there are no defensive measures. And it's a standard shot, it's a normal burst. So no extra chance of jamming. And remember, Boss does get to throw away one special effect, and he hasn't used it yet, so you could actually throw away a gun jam. 
Well, here's a case in point. He would do three points of damage with his three cards. He would have jammed his gun, but he gets to ignore one. All three cards go into the damage stack for the uh, spot 13. Voss does not jam his guns. Three points of damage to the spot. Which leaves us with the one card that the Albatross gets to uh, fire at that same spot. Here we go. Oh my, that was a good one. Five more points of damage to the spot. One more point and he's bugging out. So we've plotted the moves. I've laid down the maneuver cards and this mess is going to separate. Fly guy's going straight. The Albatross is continuing its left hand turn. Well this guy, the red SC5, is flipping around. So he's doing an Immelman. Uh, he prepared for it by going straight. Now he can execute and he'll go straight again next turn. That's his Immelman. Voss is turning hard left. So he's continuing that hard left turn, and every time he does that, he seems to find targets. And his opponent here, Mr. Blue, is doing a climb. So he wants to bank a climb point so that he can go ahead and get up to the next level, if he so chooses. And here we go. So we've got uh, exchange of fire between these two guys at close range, the Albatross and the purple spot. And we have Voss shooting at the red SE and vice versa and that's going to be also a short range. The only guy with jam guns right now is this guy. He's jammed for another couple turns. This guy's got his permanent control damage and he he picked a one pointer last time on his fire so he's got two more cards coming. I might as well draw that now. Let's see if something bad happens. Nope, not this time. Now we got these two exchanging and those two. All right, purple, the spot 13. He hasn't fired yet. The other guy's been doing all the shooting. So he's going to go, uh, he's going to go long burst into the albatross. So the base is two cards. The long burst gets him another one and the car extra card to make it more likely that he jams. Well, this is really bad. It's called nine points of damage with an explosion. So this guy is gone. Uh, ba boom. No more albatross. And now the Albatross, before he dies, gets his two cards return fire on Mr. Purple. Six points, but nothing that horrendous. Uh, he needs three more hits, I think, to make him leave the vicinity. So he's still in the fight. So this is the setup for Red shooting at Voss. He went all out, so he's got his extra jamming card. He's going to have two cards plus the bonus for a long burst. And Voss has his two defensive cards. No one else is firing at him this turn, so he can use them all on this guy. So here's the draw against Voss. There's two damage on the left side. So Voss would take two damage. But if he wanted to substitute others, he could have some more special effects. He does not want to do that. He will take the two hits. And the shooter uh, has guns jammed. He is not shooting uh, for the next three turns. Well, this is good. We got nine, 12 points. In addition to that, two wounds on the pilot will kill him. So if the plane didn't fall apart under him, the guy has been shot to pieces and he's dead. So Mr. Red falls from the sky. So all the moves have been plotted for the next turn. And we have Mr. Yellow is trying to leave and he's continuing his left turn. He's going to go off to the far board edge or the friendly board edge. We have Mr. Green, SC5, continuing his left-hand turn. DR1 is continuing a very tight left-hand turn. Now, because this is not a high-stress maneuver for him, he gets to put, and, and because he plots without any backlog of cards, he can play this card every single turn. Nobody's going to turn tighter than a highly skilled pilot in a Fokker DR1, and that's what we're seeing here. The purple uh, spot is it started a left-hand turn, and this guy is going straight. Uh, let's see, Mr. Blue. Yeah, he's still uh, he's got two turns before he can fire. And speaking of fires, this guy's got his last turn of being on fire. So not long ago, we had planes all tied up in a knot. Now they've flown by and separated. The only shot possible is we have an extended range shot from the DR1 over to the green SC5. It's at extreme range. Voss would have to do a standard shot 
consume two ammunition to draw one card. Honestly, Voss has fired 11 rounds so far of his 20. With three other planes out there that are still actively trying to kill him, I think we're not going to take that shot just because he'd only get one card. And it could be the golden BB, but odds are it isn't. So he's going to take the pause that refreshes. But what we do have to do is we got a guy, his last turn on fire. Oh, well, lucky him. He takes two more damage and he resets the fire counter back to three. Oh, man. How lucky is that? Now, again, in the standard game as written, the fire would not spread because they don't count any of the special damage. I think you have to. So basically the fire spread, it hit something flammable, got into the, the fuel or the oil or something, and it poofed up again. Now he's got trouble for another three turns and is very unlikely to survive this. And here's the plot. Uh, we see the three active British aircraft along with Voss. The yellow SC-5 is going along the map edge on fire. And he's going he's gonna to almost certainly burn to a crisp before he gets off the map. So I don't think we've got to worry about him too much anymore. So let's go ahead and execute these moves. But first, is he boss, he's going straight. The green fellow is turning to the left in his SC-5. The purple guy is doing the same thing. And in his spot... Oh, and this guy who has one run around of not having bullets is going ahead and ex continuing to extend farther out. So they're getting their distance and getting ready to swing around because this guy, they can't turn with him. They can't turn with Voss. So they got to extend and they got to come back for another firing pass. All right, the only firing, uh, unless Voss wants to use his flat turn ability, and that would be, that's best used at short range because we're going to take one card away. So he's at, uh, he's at long range. The base is one card. He loses a card for the flat turn. He gets a card back because he's Werner Voss. Uh, so it would be one card at standard uh, ammunition consumption. I think he's got a better shot coming next turn. I can just see that. So all we have is the yellow SC-5 is continuing the fire on board. Let's go ahead and pull a card and see what, what that does to us. What that does to him. Oh, okay. Well, one more hit plus uh, control surface damage. He's... That is the second control surface hit. So now he cannot do any stress moves. So he can't go directly from right to left or left to right without an intervening straight. And he also cannot do any stress moves at this point. And he's one point away from being done. Okay, he's got two more card draws to do. So the force is definitely not with him right now. Okay, starting from the far side, we have, we have this uh, spot. Spot 13, he's continuing to go straight. I think we can expect an Immelman coming from him. The SC-5 that Voss is starting to size up. He's, Voss is doing a tight turn and the SC-5 doing a normal turn. We have the uh, yellow SC-5 that is on fire and going to have to leave the map. He made another right-hand turn, but he's going to have to reverse that turn and start heading towards that map edge. He cannot re-engage. And he may just go, go up in flames here shortly. And we have uh, this guy also doing a straight, and I think we can expect a reversal from him too. As of right now, let's see, we have a fire pole, and take a look here. Okay, the boss has not turned quite enough to go ahead and, and hit him without using his flat turn ability. I don't want to do that still. So we're just going to have the fire pull. This is the second of three on the yellow SC-5. This takes him up to 15 points. He needs 16 to go away. So the next pull is going to be kind of an important thing for him. Meanwhile, all everybody's guns are unjammed at this point. So everybody's ready to rock and roll once again. I uh, executed the move. Voss is still not going to take that flat turn at long range, but the range is closing. So who knows, it may be possible next turn. And I think uh, we're gonna have these other guys who are on the north and south of the map going to be flipping around and coming back the other way. And then uh, get Voss in their crosshairs, see what they can do. All right, let's go ahead and do the last pull for this fire. 
and I pull a three, which takes him out of the game. So the, the yellow SC5 burns to a cinder after having exchanged fire with Voss. The spawn to the south has, has gone ahead and done an Immelman. He will be flipping around likewise. The spawn to the north is going to do the same thing. So both guys are going to start coming back towards the middle and do firing passes on Voss. Now that they've separated, they want to flip around and come back. The guy in the middle is kind of bait. I mean, he's, got, he's in a turning fight with Voss, and uh, right now he's holding him off well enough so that he can uh, you know, stay alive by time where these other two guys are going to bring down the hammer. But Voss, being a wily guy, he sees what's going on, and so he's broken off from Mr. Green and is now flying straight, intending to engage the blue spot over here. And at this point, Voss has a firing solution on the far spot. It's extended range. You know, I think he's going to take it. So he's going to use a standard burst that would cost two ammo points. And he's going to try to pull, he's going to haul one card and hope he gets lucky. Meanwhile, the spot in return does not have a shot because Voss is out of his firing arc. So let's see what, uh, what Voss picks. <laughs> How about a wounded pilot and three hits? That'll get your attention. All right. That was worth the shot. All right, so the moves have been plotted, and I need to point out, in addition to having a wounded pilot, our spod is also over 50% of its damage, and he's going to be turning to disengage. So now there's only two active British pilots out there to uh, contend with Werner Voss. And let's see, this guy's going straight. I think we can, we can foresee an Immelman, and this guy did his Immelman, and now he's going to try to try to make a firing pass on Voss as he goes across the map. And after the move, we see that Voss has closed the gap a bit. We're now at long range. But this guy's leaving. We don't have to shoot at him. He's, he's mission kill. So Voss has seven ammo points left as much as I'd like to I think we're gonna I think I see a head-on pass coming here shortly and I think Voss wants to really use up a lot of rounds during that pass so let's let's save this ammo let's save this ammo so that we have something good for these other guys and the moves are plotted and executed we can see Voss is turning to the left this guy's approaching, it's going to be a head-on pass that, is, that appears to be unavoidable at this time. We have the green guy going to be doing an Immelman to rejoin the fight, and this guy is having to leave. And we see Voss has continued his turn. He can take shots at this guy. Uh, we've got purple getting ready to make a head-on pass. I think that's inevitable at this point. Right now, the blue guy's in the way, so they have an intervening guy that's going to keep them from shooting at each other this uh and green has done his immelman and he's in the process of getting back in the fight and i think we're going to have voss expend one round of ammo to do a, a short burst on this guy it is at long range not extended he gets one card because he's a legendary ace he gets an extra card so that's two because it's a short burst he loses one so this is a one card shot on uh, on the blue guy who's leaving the map, I will see if we can give him a valuable parting gift. And it is a three without any other special effect. These guys are, these are stout planes, these spots. He's got 14 damage. He needs two more to die. So he's still, he's still alive. But there ain't much left. So Voss switches targets once again, and he's going to be uh, going head to head with the spot. This guy's leaving. Spot's turning left, this guy's doing a side slip to the right, and the SC5 down in the south is going to uh, just do a straight on move to close the range. What we have is point blank action between this purple spot and uh, Werner Voss. So let's go ahead. Now Voss is going to go all out. He's going to do, he is going to use uh, four ammo points on this one. See if he can put this guy out of his misery. Likewise the purple one. Everybody's using everything they got. This is the shot from the uh, spot to, onto Voss. It's going to be at short range, so it gets a two-card base. 
He's using a long burst that gets him another card, but it also gets him the extra card for jamming his guns. And Voss gets his two defensive cards that he can substitute should they be uh, more favorable to him than what, uh, what the spot drew. Let's see what we got. So this is interesting. Uh, they're gonna, he's going to get a chunk of Werner Voss here. Uh, this, let's see. All right, so he's got one control damage on the left side, and uh, one of his substitute cards is uh, also control damage. I don't think he wants to take two control damage. That would be one more, and, he, and he's down. He is going to take four, eight, nine. That would be enough to kill him. <laughs> so, um, num, 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 num. well, the zero is an easy one. So we're going to take... This guy's going to substitute there, and then, oh, it's evil both ways. It's just evil both ways. Uh, five points puts him at ten, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, he's taking five damage points. If we don't use that two card, he's going to be at ten with four more to, oh, three more to go before he's down. On the other hand, if we do use it, he's going to have two control surface hits, which is likewise bad. Let's take the four hits. Uh, so it's going to be five hits total, bringing him up to a total of ten, and with uh, one control surface hit. So that's what we're going to run with. And here's uh, Voss's return fire. It's close range, so the base is two. Legendary Ace gives him another card, and the Long Burst gives him yet another card. Oh, and... That's the extra card for the uh, jam. Okay, let's see what we got. And I wouldn't necessarily say this is outstanding, but Voss gets to negate one of the uh, extraordinary damages. Did not jam his guns. Uh, he's got six points of damage, and that is enough to get this plane 12 points and over 50%. So he got shredded by Voss, and he is... Uh, he is uh, going to be leaving the map. And now we are down to but one allied plane that isn't leaving the map. And Voss has two ammo points left. So I think we're setting up another head-on pass here. And I think that's going to conclude this game. Because I think this green guy is just, no matter what, he's just going to bug out. He's not going to stay there and fight Werner Voss by himself. All right, let me, uh, let me plot some cards. In fact, let me just pick up these guys that are leaving, get them out of the way. They have, they've exited the scene. And now there's not much left for these guys to do but to fly straight into each other's teeth and uh, see who gets the worst of it. Uh, this guy's doing a slip to the right. Voss is doing a straight on move. And so at this point these two pilots are going to be shooting at each other. Voss only has two shots left, uh, two points left. He's going to use one of them here. There may be another shot coming. The SC is going to pile on all four. He's at long range, not an extreme range shot. Uh, so the base is one card. Uh, and with the long burst, he gets another one with an extra chance to jam. So the SC is firing with two cards. And Voss, using a short burst, at extended range, the base is one, he's Voss, he gets another card, and he loses it for the short burst. He gets one card. So it's two cards for the SC and one card for Voss. Let's see what happens. So for the SC shot, he's got his two uh, uh, cards for effect. He's got his extra card for jamming because of the long burst, and the two defensive cards that Voss gets to use every turn. Ooh, nasty, nasty. No, he's not out of ammo. And, uh, oh, nope, Voss says here if you can hit. Yeah, okay. But Voss can only take three hits. So this has got to go. Okay, so he gets to choose. Oh, well, we don't want to. Let's give you out of ammo. Or let's give you a jammed gun. And so Voss takes two hits. He's got one left. And the shooter is, uh, is uh, jammed his guns. That's all that happens to Voss. Two, two damage. Now let's take a look who it Voss delivers in return. Oh, foreign smoking. 
Now this is the first damage on this guy, so he's still relatively healthy. The ally has jammed guns. So Voss, I believe, is going to live. Not by much, but he's going to live. Let's, let's play this out another turn, see what happens. And here we go. Uh, see, the, the SC5 did a straight move, and Voss did a special stall maneuver that basically allows him to, to really do a short move. And so he did that on purpose so that he would have a chance of using that last shot. And with one bullet left, that's a short burst. Uh, the base is two. Uh, Legendary Ace brings it up to three. Short burst brings it back down to two. We've got two cards. And actually, well, nothing dramatic. Not much effect. Not much effect. The Voss can ignore one special, so the jam does not count, and the uh, the one damage goes on the uh, C. And it will do that. Now, officially, he's not over half, but I think for the purpose of this game, I think it's done. Voss is out of ammo, and uh, the competition's been shredded. This guy's seen everybody else leave. The SE's seen everybody else leave. He's smoking. He's not feeling well. He has been shot. He's, uh, his plane has been shot, although it's not half yet. I'd say that he's leaving. So at this point, uh, Voss survives this encounter with one hit left to his aircraft. So in summary, there were two Allied planes shot down, if that I recall. Uh, there were three aborts, and uh, the one we have here, which is kind of a voluntary disengage, if you call it that. Uh, meanwhile, on the German side, they lost the Albatross in a in rather spectacular fashion, and uh, Voss twisted and turned and did what he had to do, and in this game, he survived. Now, if you wanted to, to, to make it even a little bit more realistic in a sense, uh, you would have three spots come in instead of two, and you'd probably make two of these, uh, these allied planes, play, say, the flight leader for each, each element or each flight group to, uh, to be a, a regular ace. So, there we go. Werner Voss lives uh, to, uh, to terrorize allied pilots for God knows how many more months, possibly to the end of the war. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I think these rules make the, as I said, I wanted to make aces to be feared, and I think aces are now to be feared. And if you haven't done so already, and you have stuck through two complete videos on uh, uh, Wings of Glory, as extended by myself, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and see what else I'm up to for my, for my next adventures. But with that, this is all for today. This is Paul the Oaken Knight, and I'm wishing you a pleasant evening.